you concerned about the upcoming switch to digital television? Hi, I'm Ben Meyer for Digital Landing, and today I'm going to answer a few questions about the upcoming switch from analog TV to digital, and then also show you how to set up a converter box so you can continue to watch TV on older sets like this one. Soon, broadcast TV, that is TV over the airwaves, will stop broadcasting in analog and move to a purely digital signal. So who does this affect? If you get your TV over cable, like a Comcast, or satellite, like DirecTV, or even Fios, this changeover does not affect you one bit. If you want to press stop right now, I wouldn't be offended. But for the rest of us, especially if you have a TV like this one that's a tube TV or, or even an older flat panel display, this changeover probably will affect you because your TV doesn't understand the digital signals. So you're going to need a converter box that's going to translate the digital back into analog so you can continue to watch your favorite shows. And I'm going to show you right now how to set that up. Okay, so this is a basic converter box that costs about 60 bucks. You can get them at any electronics store. Um, most have the same features, but do a little research first to weed out any lemon brands. Uh, I'm going to show you how to connect this to your TV and any peripherals so you can continue to watch your favorite shows and take advantage of some of the features uh, of digital TV that aren't available on analog sets. Okay, setting up the converter box is pretty straightforward. You're essentially placing it between the television and the antenna source. So this antenna is plugged in to the TV via the coaxial jack. So I'm going to unplug it right here, and then I'm going to plug it in to where it says out to TV, because this is connected to the TV. I'm not going to plug it all the way in, but you get the idea. The other, the other plug you need to use is another coaxial. This came with the converter box, and I'm going to plug one end into where it says antenna in, and connect the other one, obviously, to the antenna. Boom, you're done. Now you're ready to plug everything in and start searching for channels. Okay, when working with peripherals in this DTV setup, like a Xbox or a DVD player, really nothing changes. If you have extra inputs on your TV, you just plug those devices into those inputs um, and select those inputs on your TV and you can game away. The one difference is if you're trying to record shows uh, with a VCR or something that, that can record. And in that case, you're going to have to uh, run your VCR in between the converter box and the TV. So if you already have your VCR plugged in, like I have here, and the converter box is already set up, like I have here, all you have to do is take a cord that's running to the TV from the converter box, unplug it from the TV, and plug it into the VCR in the input. Now this could be done with a coaxial cord, or it could be done with a composite running in as well. Okay, once you've plugged everything in, you use the remote control you got from the converter box. Uh, turn on your TV first, of course, and then you should get some screen like this. It'll, it'll have you choose a language. I'm going to choose English. And then it will ask you to begin a channel search. And this is going to search for uh, the digital signal and find the channels that it can find. So I'm going to start that. And it will begin scanning. So it found a channel list here, and you'll notice a few things that are different from analog TV. One is the channels aren't just 4, 5, 7. They're 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. On the digital spectrum, each broadcaster actually can broadcast multiple signals. So NBC has their regular channel, an all-weather channel, and a universal sports channel. So that's one of the benefits of digital TV. You'll probably end up with more channels. The other thing is it has program information like you would get with cable or satellite. So you know that the Bonnie Hunt Show is on now and Days of Our Lives is coming up next. So I'm going to click OK here. And bam, we're watching the show. OK, so let's talk about antennas. Um, first off, there is no such thing as an HD antenna. You don't need to rush off and get anything new. If these rabbit ears here pull in the channels that you're used to seeing, plus some, you don't really need to change a thing. The, the one difference between analog and digital, though, is uh, you can't get a bad digital signal. It's an all or nothing deal. So if you're not getting the channels when it pulls up a channel list that you want, you're missing out on some of your local affiliates, or you just want to try to get more channels that you used to, maybe a friend has digital and they're getting more channels than you locally, uh, you can step up to a more powerful antenna. Uh, after rabbit ears here, you probably have an indoor-outdoor antenna is the next most powerful. 
A lot of them have a built-in power amplification. You plug them into a wall socket, and it gives it a signal boost. The most powerful type of antennas, though, are the rooftop antennas, because uh, they can really pull down the signals. Unfortunately, it's uh, a more of a pain to install, and they're the most expensive. They're usually over $100. So I hope that helped answer a few of your questions about the transition to digital television. You can also find out a lot more information at the government's website, and that's dtv2009.gov. I'm Ben Meyer for Digital Landing, and I'll see you next time. It's pretty simple, except when I'm doing it, because when I'm doing it, I make it really complicated.